to go do some laundry. I had this nice sweater on and they were like, let's not get iodine on your sweater when I just gave plasma. They were like, your sweater is really nice. So anyways, um, just saying this too, so everyone knows. Yeah, I've got a shirt under here. But anyways, um, where to begin? Okay. So solving the abortion issue, solving it, like I just said in a video right before this one, if it hasn't come up yet, it is generational. It is, it is something that does not happen usually in the context of a girl making a decision by herself. She may be left by herself like I was, but the decision making process is not something somebody usually does on their own. So, um, someone asked if I hate my mother. My mother did me dirty. I will say that. I did respond and said she did the best she could. She had a hard life. This is something one of the relatives felt like, you know, that she just had it rough with, with growing up, taking care of, you know, her brothers and sisters in the projects, no food. You know, she used to tell me all they had was like a bread and mustard. And she was the oldest, so she had to take care of all her brothers and sisters. There is no question, while my grandmother was out whoring around, basically, and I might get censored for that one, but it's the truth. I mean, she was out doing that. She looked like an Elizabeth Taylor. She was out with, you know, the black men. The black men had the parties. My mother was dragged into that. My father would literally go over when he was dating her, be her hero, and kick these men literally grab them. My dad was a six foot something, you know, construction worker, tough guy, grab them and literally pull them out. That's the type of life my mother grew up in. Does it mean like we do that nowadays? Usually not. I mean, some people live like that, but, um, so my grandmother, my mother had that kind of, you know, background. Do I feel like she was completely innocent? No, no, she knew, she knew exactly what she was doing. She knew, she knew what abortion was. She knew she, she did not, my father would probably kick me out. So she wanted me to have an abortion. No doubt about it. Talked, tried to talk me into it, twisted everything a certain way so that when I, she dragged me over to my boyfriend's, um, you know, she took over the whole drama queen she, I never asked her for help. I never once asked her to get in my business. So if I was pregnant, like when I was, and or now, you know, I'm too old now, but if I was, you wouldn't do this to a woman, right? A pregnant woman. You would not do this. You would not be like, do you want me to help you raise the kid or what? So um, definitely did not want her help after she betrayed me. You know, I did not want her help. It didn't mean that I wanted an abortion. So, um, so you wouldn't do that, right? I mean, if she's letting me date and be alone with a guy, I, I pretty much had, you know, some autonomy on my own with that. And then all of a sudden for a mother not being involved in my life and then the abortion, you know, the pregnancy comes in. Oh my goodness. Now I care. Now I'll be in your life, Right. So emotional abuse, I did, there are some books, Terry Apter, A-P-T-E-R, about the toxic mother-daughter relationship. That's usually what you're trying to get through with an abortion. It usually is. At some level, society, a boyfriend, something, some level, the very core of the upbringing was that it's okay to have an abortion, whether it was... You heard things growing up, you didn't have the right training, you didn't have the sex talks about the birds and the bees, whatever. There is some kind of um, teaching, coping skill, something that says it's okay for a girl to have an abortion. And I've seen mothers in front of Planned Parenthood bringing their daughters to have an abortion. Back in my day, we didn't have a voice. Someone said, there's no way she could have forced an abortion on you. Yes, she did. Uh, you didn't have a voice when you were growing up. Kids were seen and they were not heard for the most part, right? So, um, my mom did the best she could with what she had, but that does not take away the responsibility of what she did to me. It doesn't. She knew 
she knew more than I did. I was a kid. Come on. You know, she knew. So, um, my father knew. He said once people make mistakes. So my father knew. They knew. I did not know. And that baby was sacrificed. So just like, um, okay, for example, we hear there's two of the worst cases that could ever happen for a woman to have an abortion. One is rape and one is for the mother's health, right? So let's just take one of the worst case scenarios that is psychologically different than a normal, you know, getting pregnant. Um, let's just take one that everyone uses as an excuse for all abortions. So if a woman's pregnant by rape, she has lost a lot. Everyone will agree with that. She's lost her innocence. She's lost her dignity. She's lost a ton of stuff. Everybody can agree. Kind of like an abortion, honestly. You, When you are forced into this and you don't know what it is, you've lost dignity. You've lost innocence. You've lost a lot. Um, but on the other hand, would we give that rapist the death penalty? A lot of people would say, no, it's not going to be the death penalty. It will be justice. That guy will be in jail for a long time. But we don't say the death penalty, right? So here's three victims. The mother, the, the, it, I wouldn't say he's a victim, the guy. So I said that wrong. He's not a victim. And then the other victim is the baby. So two victims and the baby gets the death penalty. So for the actions of that man, the baby gets the death penalty, okay? And usually, just because a woman has something done wrong to her, for her to have, she's got two choices. She can be the hero in the story, and she can have that baby and give that child life, whether she wants to raise it or not is up to her. Or she can, um, she can make the situation worse and kill with innocent blood. So that's not really a good description or a good choice saying, well, if a woman's raped, she should have an abortion. Um, so yeah, my mother did me dirty. She did me dirty. They wanted to hide it. Uh, nobody was there for me. She actually, my mother left me. She left me at, she left me at the clinic. And then not only did she abandon me, but then when I'm in the car, right, she brings me to Weeks restaurant and I'm in the car and I, we had come out of the restaurant cause I couldn't sit up. She's like, come on, let's scram. Let's get out of here kind of thing. Come on. She knew it was wrong the whole time. I'm pretty sure she made me pay for the bill, gave me money. She went in the car. I barely could walk to the car. I remember that. And I'm sitting in the worst pain I have ever felt, not knowing I'm three months along focusing on just trying to, I, I still remember sitting in the passenger seat, trying to just bear through the pain. And she sat there and let it happen. She sat there. So if you had, um, if you had a, um, a pregnant woman that you knew of who was in, you know, total pain, right? what would you do? You'd help her. You'd call an ambulance. You'd call medical. You would help a woman like this. Instead, my mother sat there and did nothing. Now, I think in her defense, she had said, it's okay, or something like that. You'll be okay, or, you know, whatever. So, um, the bottom line for this one was, despite her crises, not mine, her not knowing what to do, she still had an underlying evil that, you know, that did come out at times that she knew and she didn't care. So, um, she had my grandmother, I had told my grandmother about it later in life. She's like, what, what you had an abortion? She was in total shock. She was like, what? I mean, not really, not really like harsh like that. Just like it wasn't directed at me. She's just like, you got to be kidding. You had an abortion. She was just really in shock because nobody knew about this, right? So she was really, as a strong Catholic, she was really just like, oh my goodness, Melissa, I didn't know or something like that. 
So she had called my mother on it. And the next time I saw my grandmother, my grandmother went in cahoots with my mother and said, you were too young. And the reason why she did that is because my mother and her talked and my mother had stuff on her. My mother could use stuff that she had on my grandmother that my grandmother knew that she did that was wrong. So, um, like I said, I had no support after I had nothing. So this is generational. It does happen. You are brought up in a certain like kind of tribe with the woman around you. I had an aunt. I had a aunt Linda, my aunt Patty, my aunt, um, Linda on my other side, my aunt Mary, my aunt Carol, Carol, Patty, Linda, Kim, and my mother Lee. Okay. So, um, you are brought up in that kind of tribe, that worldly thinking. And, you know, I saw my aunt Kim dating a bunch of guys, you know, I saw my aunt Patty going out to clubs with my grandmother. Um, my aunt Carol had her husband die when I was young in a motorcycle accident and that traumatized her for years. He was just going to go get a mega bucks ticket. His friend was drinking and they got in an accident and the friend who was drunk did not die, but he did. Two little kids. So that was like a huge thing for the whole entire family for a while. Um, but you have this, you have this tribe that girls are brought up in and they're taught, you know, whatever it is. Oh, it's just take a, you know, a careless uh, attitude toward dating. If one guy doesn't work that's fine. Be in love with being in love. You know, those kind of things all around you. So when it comes to being pregnant unexpectedly and, you know, you hear your aunt right at that same time, oh, I had an abortion. You know, you hear your aunt had one or you hear this or you hear that. Um, this is the, the tiny little uh, area we want to get into with girls. Okay. So a lot of times, like I had nobody, I mean, it happened really fast. I had no one to talk to. It's not like I could reach out to somebody. I couldn't reach out, um, to anyone really. My mother took over and even to this day, she did me dirty. Even when I had kids, I had five of my kids and she, um, when I was in the hospital with my first one, it was, did you have them yet? Did you have them yet? I had, I found my voice for the first time and I told the nurse, I said, tell my mother, do not call here again. I will call her when I have him. I was in the middle of labor. I was three days in the hospital. Before that, it was, I want to be in the room with you. You are not going to be in the room with me. Kim and Graham, they, Graham was in the room with Kim when she had hers. I don't care what Graham did. You're not going to be in the room with me. My husband is. Um... You won't let us grandparent. First time they took my son. I mean, he was like only days old and they wanted to take him. And I was a little uncomfortable with it. But they did take him. And then, you know, it was formula fed to him with no mixing of water. It was no car seat. So I had to say something about the formula. Oh, he's fine. He drank it. It's his fault. He drank it. This is a baby, right? Why didn't you use car seats? You know it's the law. Why didn't you use car seats? You didn't leave your car seat. I forgot it. It doesn't mean that you can go off and go take, you know, two or three of my kids without a car seat. So it was just this kind of stuff all the way up. And then it was, you know, yes, you can take them here, but I don't want them going over here. You won't let me take them. You won't let me do what I want. I can't do anything with your kids. So, I mean, she took them shopping. She took them out to eat. I let her mother. But if I put any boundary up or had any voice at all with my kids, it was like, look out. I am the grandmother. And I, I actually had to say to both her and my in-law, because she went to my in-laws and started complaining. Melissa won't let me grandparent. She won't let me do what I want with the kids. So then she got my husband's mother on board and she's like, oh, you know, we can do what we want. We're the grandparent. And I'm like, excuse me, I am the mother. You are the grandmother. And when it comes down to it, it's what I say, not you. So, I mean, I had to really fight 
just to be a mother with my mother. So she did me dirty a lot. I mean, like one time I was over there. She says, my father says, those two, the first two, they're going to be okay. But I don't know about your third one. I don't know about him. I don't know if he's going to be okay in life. My son heard this. Another time, she takes my kids to see her boss. Oh, we heard about you. This is to my third one. We heard your trouble, but these two are good. And so the favoritism that I had as a kid, this person's probably going to hit me here. Okay, I'm in a parking lot. The favoritism that I had to deal with, with being favored by my mother, and she treated my brother like crap. And I mean crap. He was the black sheep. Um, she was trying to do to my kids. So I'm like, you are not doing this to my third son because he's hyper, because he's different. You're not going to treat him differently. So, I mean, I had to fight as a mother all the way up with my mother. And, um, when it came down to it in the end, she didn't want a relationship. And I, I was told she was in the hospital for COVID. I had reached out to her a few years ago. You know, I had wished her well, and then I heard, oh, she doesn't want you calling anymore because it's too hard to have a relationship with you. And so this is a mother who was all for herself. She really didn't. Emotional abuse is hard to see because there is some good. There's going out to eat, buying me nice clothes. I had really nice clothes growing up, um, which I appreciated. I did. I did because they were school clothes. But I was her trophy. I was a trophy daughter. You know, I had to look good. I had to look a certain way uh, to look good on the outside to people. But on the inside, it really wasn't there. My grandmother, when I would go out with family, it was always, this is my first granddaughter. This is my granddaughter. Everybody, this is my first granddaughter. So she would lift me up. But once with my grandmother too, I put boundaries up. And I was like, she's like, you're Catholic because I'm Catholic. No, I'm not Catholic, I said. I said, I'm a Christian. I'm not Catholic. Everything changed. Everything, you know. So my grandmother at one point too, why, why are you such a pretty girl in a place like this? Why are you having three kids in a trailer? Why are you, you know, you deserve better. You should be out there with, you know, she tried to hook me up with her landlord once. I, he, you know, I had to tell him, I'm like, I'm married. I was with two of my last kids going to see my grandmother she was trying to hook me up with the guy and I said I've got a wedding ring you know I'm married and then um I tried to tell my mother what my grandmother was up to again and my mother's like oh that would have never happened Kim said your legs are too fat and you know I had to deal with that and it's like was Kim there what does Kim know right Kim was not there so um my grandmother would do this to my mother, which I felt like my mother should have, she should have known better because my mother, when my grandmother had, my mother was dating my father and my grandmother had all these men all the time and she didn't like my father. So she would try to hook my mother up and find boyfriends for her. So this is something my grandmother always did. It was well known, um... So when I went to go over to talk to my mother about my grandmother's shenanigans, um, my mother stuck with my grandmother. So they all kind of stuck together uh, to, you know, they didn't want the truth coming out. They didn't want, you know, stuff from their past coming out. There is a lot there. There is a lot. Uh, so my my mother wasn't really there for me. She had her issues with her with my grandmother. Um, so, you know, I'm not going to go into some stuff, but there was a lot there. So do I hate my mother? Do I hate her? That is the question someone asked me. No, I do not hate her. I don't hate her after, you know, when she was, uh, when we would go out later, you know, we'd go to friendlies or we'd go out to eat and she didn't really want to deal with the abortion. She never talked about it with me except once you were too young. And then she just tried to constantly get to my kids. And I was just like, I don't know what is going on here, but you know, you don't, you, you know, you're not coming over whenever you want. The kids are napping. No, you're not taking a shower over here. So she gave me a huge guilt trip. 
because she wanted to come over and take a shower. And I'm like, no, you're not taking a shower over here, you know? She's like, well, I have to go to the gym and I need a shower. I'm like, I'm busy. You're not coming over whenever you want. You're not running my life. And um, so do I hate her? No, I don't hate her, but I, I wouldn't trust her at all. And I hate to say that I saw her one day in Walmart and she came up to me and betrayed me like Judas. She gave me a kiss on the cheek. And she was talking, my grandmother from the country was with her this time. And she's just munching on popcorn. One of the last times I saw her and she's like, what's up? And she's munching on popcorn. I'm like, I'm busy, you know, just busy. And I didn't really give her much of the time of the day because of the way she had treated me. And I'm telling you, I have had to put a ton of boundaries up with my mother and I had to be the parent and it's not always fun, but it needs to be done. She would just try to run all over me, even when I had my kids. So um, it's something you have to do. You have to be willing to let go of that relationship too. Uh, one time she's like, are you having another one? This is when I had like my fourth born son. Don't tell me you're having another one. Look at all the diapers you have to change. I was like... <laughs> I'm pregnant. I'm going to be taking care of myself now. And I think you're, you know, I'll talk to you some other time. You know, I'm on my way to bringing my kids out. So, I mean, it was just constant running over me. What do you, you know, and I just constantly had to, you know, you're homeschooling. I hope you can do it. Uh, you know, so I didn't need her when I was young. I was on my own. I was dating by 15 graduated early from high school without her, was on my own dating other guys without her. Um, my wedding, she's kind of took over, you know, oh, Shirley has a dress for you. Kind of took over with my prom, my prom. Linda has a dress. Um, so I think a healthy relationship to end this with your mother is mutual respect. That is what I will say. Mutual respect, healthy boundaries, um, she would tear my husband down too sometimes and my kids like, oh, he's a loner. He's a loner. You know, no, this is not how you're going to talk about my kids. You're not going to talk to my kids like this. And you certainly are not going to treat my husband in this manner either. So you have got to get through that and do it. And then, you know, even now, never an apology for what she did with that abortion. Do I hate her? No. Do I hate my grandmother? No. Um, is, is the truth that my grandmother hoard around? Yep. Is the truth that she, she was awful to my mother? Yep. Was it something I think my mother saw too and was like, oh, I don't, you know, I don't think you should have kids or whatever. I don't know, but she had no right to do that. And that is where we have to say, I don't hate you, but this is the truth. You did a lot of damage. You did a lot of harm. And if you were someone else, I probably would have sued the pants off you, you know, or beat the, I don't know, beat the crap out of you or something for taking my kid. Seriously, we do not put up with people killing our kids. So I do hold the doctor more responsible who knew more. I do. I hold the um, people in society who allow abortion, who make the laws more responsible because again, my mother had a rough life. Eighth grade, sixth or eighth grade education. But did she know she was a mother? Yes, she did. Okay, that's what I got for now, guys.